Hello folks, here's a little video log for you. Um, we've had bad winds as you probably know and uh, as a result of that my fence took a tumble for the worst let me show you it's uh it's not completely fallen over but that's only because of some trees that have uh or bushes from my neighbors that have sort of helped it stay where it was let me show you as you can probably see there it's leaning right over so that's finally prompted me to start work and get the uh, the little spur posts put into place now as you can see here for example i've done a bit of work We've started digging away and levelling out the ground here. We've done this over the weekend, me and uh, Jimmy. So these have been buried, as you can see, get out of the way Barney, and are lovely and solid now. We had to dig the old concrete posts there from the back, which were literally just underneath there. So we've got the old wood out of the ground there and the big lump of concrete, which as you can see over here, which has been broken up. Um, that was hard work I can tell you just for them two that's only two posts worth there so as you see we've been leveling the earth as well and um, we've got to carry on with this because I actually run out of cement what are you doing Barney he's looking at the little bonfire there which we've attached but as I say we've started leveling the ground out here as you can probably see this was a, a, a big mound obviously and that's got to be leveled out over there as you can see it's a lot more leveler now and we've still got to rake all this off and we've still got some more little tree stumps to come up there but once this is all leveled as you can see we'll uh, be able to get the polytunnel up so I've ordered some more sand I've got only got five of these uh, concrete posts so I'll put two in there three four five will take me up to there I will need some more further up the line but this is the most important bit obviously because the fences are uh, blowing over there so that's what we've been working on at the moment now Jim has been doing a little bit to the uh, mini arches over the last couple of days, let me just show you he's actually painted them now, he was going to take them into work to paint them but um, I was terrible. he's actually done them himself we've lost the light in the middle here so as you can probably see up there, we've got to get a new tube in there but yeah he's, he's glossed the wheel arches himself and they don't look too bad at all he's done done a nice job of them so um, these are virtually ready to go on there's a little bit of dust in them but I don't think that's really going to matter they've got a nice uh, gloss on them so they're ready to go on so that's the wheel arches we've had a bit of a tidy up because we did get ourselves into a little bit of a mess in here and as I say this is why the mopeds had to just get moved back into the uh, corner there uh, just for a little bit I've got a plan for this I'll, I'll show you this a bit later all this is going to get cleared out and this is going to become a new work area I'll tell you a bit about that a bit about that a bit later so here's the rest of the fairings obviously which we've still got to work on I've uh, filled that piece now that's the piece that we've done on camera the last time and um, I started doing the uh, mud guard as you can probably I don't know if I showed you that on camera you may have remembered that that had a big crack down the middle well I've only I've only literally tacked the front of it in other words I've not done the back of it yet as you can see there's the gap which I'm going to be uh, filling in and as you can see I've started there on this edge but even at the moment that, there is no flexion in that joint whatsoever and a few of you have commented that uh, you like my idea for um, using the cable ties as filler rods and I can assure you look, I've, I've, I'm actually flexing that with my hand and there's no flexion in that joint whatsoever so this cable tie technique and once you get some sort of 80 grit paper and sand that back you've got a nice level smooth surface and it may require just a little smidgen of filling over the top but as you can probably see I'm going to show you closer now there's a big crack there again uh, on this there's this crack here which as you can see is quite a monster it goes right the way down to there it's got three or four other cracks coming off of it and you'll see this in the next video obviously where I actually do repair this bit amongst other bits as well so you, I just wanted you to get a close up vision of what this piece is actually like I mean as I said before to buy a new one of these is only 15 pounds but this is more of an experiment for me as well 
because if this actually does work which it looks like it's going to work like you can see there that cable tie once it's heated up it goes absolutely solid and a few of you have uh, asked the questions of do I melt the rest of the surrounding as well yes I do I put the heat the the soldering iron on top of the cable tie the cable tie melts into the groove and then I feed it in from side to side to actually fill the groove up so any crevices or voids have actually been filled up and melted in with the actual plastic which makes this as I say one piece again so it is as strong as it originally was when it uh, came out of the factory I would imagine so that's the piece we're going to be working on next amongst all the other pieces I need to get this moped now out and uh, repaired but as I say this is what's held us up at the moment Jimmy needed a clean work area for spraying the old wheel arches so yeah it's all looking pretty good at the moment as I say that area over there I'm, I've actually sourced a, uh, a tank, a nice big tank, I'll tell you more about that a bit later on, because you probably saw my hydrographics uh, video, uh, the one previous to the last one, and the, uh, the way that it didn't actually work properly, well I've actually worked out why that was now, and um, I'll be showing you that a bit further down the line when we actually do some hydrographics, but I'm going to be dedicating that area to starting up a little business for hydrographics, and you'll see me uh, progress as I go along and uh, start incorporating the, the equipment and making the equipment. I'm not paying £2,000 for one of these big industrial tanks. So you, you can do it a lot cheaper if you use your, your noddle, your head and use a few do-it-yourself skills. So I'm going to be showing you that as well in, uh, in the near future. So yeah, it's um, we're all coming on. I'm going to come out of here now so it's a bit dark in here. As soon as I've got that levelled out and the other three or four concrete posts in there, I can fix that fence back up, the ground will be totally levelled out and we're going to start putting the uh, poly tunnel up and that won't take long at all. So that'll be another little project which we've got coming because it's coming up to March now. I want to start planting stuff in the uh, poly tunnel and start getting some uh, sort of homegrown vegetables for us to eat throughout the year. I will eventually get this area cleared here as well. What I've decided to do with the these lot of shrubs and bushes there is to build that will be like a fruit thing a fruit uh, section where we grow blackberries raspberries and all that sort of stuff uh, gooseberries maybe a couple of fruit trees and i'll have a few posts four posts or something and uh, be able to put some sort of net in over that to protect it from the birds so as i say lots coming up on the channel this is just a quick little vlog just to show you that i've been up to stuff and we've been suffering with the weather Anyway, quick one for now. Hope you've enjoyed this one, and I'll see you again in the uh, next video. Thanks very much. Bye-bye for now.